Okay, this video is going to introduce you to a couple microtonal ear trainers that I've designed that you can use for the New England Conservatory microtonal ear training class. Uh, the tutorial will be intended for students in that class, but um, anybody can use these. They're available on my website for free. So first, I'm just going to do a real quick tour and introduction of what this software can do uh, so you can see if you're interested in using it or not and then we'll go through how to download and install everything necessary to use it so when you get everything set up you'll be looking at something like this and this what you're looking at is sort of a a scroll this is proportional notation and so there's no measures or anything here now you can add a different module that has measures uh, but we won't do that in this video. This is primarily just a tool for checking and writing short ideas that you'll need to do for completing your assignments and to practice these intervals. Um, okay, so how to use it. Uh, basically, if you click on a note, it'll be selected and then you can drag it up or down. And you'll notice that already we're using in this program a different type of quarter tone accidental than you will be using in class. So that's one thing that's different about this program is we don't use Joe Maneri's accidentals. They don't have them in this program. Um, so just be aware. The, these quarter tone accidentals have come into pretty common use, so they've been used in this program. But you can change how the accidentals look by showing direct sense values and step values by clicking on this object. So here, we're not going to display any accidentals, and it hides all the information. That's the first dot. Second one is standard quarter tone accidentals. Third one will show you uh, step values, quarter step, half step, three quarter step, etc., or three quarter sharp, half step, sharp, etc. Last one will show you unreduced fractions. So it's the same thing, but like we don't reduce two fourths to a half. And then the last one is actual sense values. So again, if you click on a note and drag it up and down, you can change the pitch. And if you drag a note to the left or right with a mouse, then you can change its position in time. These lines attached to the notes are durations. And if you click on the end of the line, that little bar, you can click or drag that to change the duration of the pitch. To play any of this back, you simply hit this, either hit, make sure this white thing is selected, the scroll is selected, and hit the space bar, and it will start playing what you've written. Or if you just want to play a part of what you've written, you can select it by clicking and dragging until your selection goes pink, and then click play selection. Okay, and it's to stop, you just hit the stop button here. You can zoom in or out. All right. And finally, I've included a small little library of presets to practice with here. Like I've had a chromatic scale. Scale with 150 cents. Scale with 250 cents. And then these are all comparisons. So this will compare a quarter tone interval with uh, a close half step interval, normal uh, 12 tone equal temperament interval. And these are sort of similar to the Wernz, uh, to the Professor Wernz's practice tracks. You'll hear the quarter tone interval first, and then you'll hear the 12 tone equal tempered interval. And then you'll hear the other 12 tone equal tempered interval that it's close to. And then you'll hear the quarter tone one again. So you hear the quarter tone one and then a minor third here. So you hear this, this um, uh, 350 cents here. You'll hear 300 cents here and then 400 cents here in this example. And the, the pattern is all the same for all the other comparisons. So like if you go to 150, you'll hear 150 cents 
100 cents, 200 cents, and then 150 at the end. This is not, these are not meant to replace Professor Wernz's practice tracks. It's just sort of a method of practice that I also felt was useful when I was learning this material. The biggest advantage of using this tool, obviously, is to be able to delete all this and to write your own stuff. And the way you do that is, first of all, you can clear any selection by selecting everything and then just hitting backspace, or you can click the clear button and that'll clear the whole roll. So to add a note, you have to hold control and click. All right. So sometimes like when you're zoomed out this far, it can look like, oh man, that's this is like really dense, but if you if you zoom in, you can sometimes get a better idea of how close things actually are in time. And these darker gray lines are always second markers so that you can help you keep you oriented there. So let's say for your homework assignment, you have to write a short quarter tone melody or something like that. And you decide that this is your awesome melody that you're going to sing for people in class. You can um, write your notes down by command clicking or on Mac it's command and uh, Windows it's control that will add the note sort of adjust all your durations and let's play it back So I find this tool is very helpful for learning these melodies that you have to write and then playing them back and practicing them. So this is um, a completely computer accurate um, way to practice quarter tones. Um, if you want to sort of understand what's going on under the, under the hood here, you can click this yellow patching mode chalkboard down here and it will show you this is what goes into what's called patching mode. When you're designing a patch in at Maximus P, which is the sort of host program for this, this is what it looks like. It's just a visual programming language that's based on um, the C programming language. So every one of these little modules is usually just a program written in, in C. Uh, but you connect them with these wires, so it's sort of intuitive to musicians. Um, or at least ones who play electronic instruments where you have to do this sort of thing. So when you're designing the patch, this is what it, it looks like. So it's, um, it's some t sometimes more complicated than just what you're looking at here. This is what's called presentation mode, and you're only looking at the things that I've chosen to show in the patch. But if you look here, this is what it looks like when you're actually creating the patch. And just to show you like an example of something that you can do, in Maximus P and feel free to do this um, you saw before when we like added some notes we had an issue where like it it adds a standard duration of one second each time when you click and just because it doesn't know exactly what you want so when I command or control click and add notes standard duration is chosen for me but I may want this to sort of be like a melody and not a harmony where all these notes are sort of overlapping right now and there's a very simple thing we can do to do that, we can write a command. So um, to unlock the patch so that you can edit it, you're going to hit Command E or Control E on Windows. Command E on Mac, Control E on Windows. And when you do that, you'll see all these little dots sort of show up in the background. That means you can edit it now. And then with your mouse hovering in any sort of blank, blank space, just hit the letter M on your keyboard. And then I'll bring up this little black box. It's M for message, so we're typing a message now, and you just type the word legato. This is a message that this editor, editor role will understand, and if we connect it to that editor, oops, and then lock the patch again, so Command E or Control E, and then select our selection and click legato, we'll see that now all the durations have been trimmed to only last until the next note in time. So that's actually a very useful tool. So if you want to do that and keep that, then that's one way you can edit this patch to sort of add a tool for yourself. And there's thousands of, 
of tools that you can add. So like if you add, if you type the letter N in the blank space, that will give you a blank program. And then if you type the letter Bach, which is the library we use for this, a little pop-up display comes down and it shows you all the objects, which are basically small programs that you can add to this patch. And there's more than this uh, to do different things. So it's a vast set of tools. I highly encourage anybody interested in how to make stuff like this to learn Max MSP. It's very widely used. It's a hugely supportive community of people. There's even open source software that's written for it. Um, and it's a great way to start learning programming, I think. If, uh, if programming itself is a little daunting, I know it was for me, um, this is a great way to understand programming uh, in a way that's probably more intuitive to start with as a musician. And then um, going into actual programming after this is, is actually not so challenging. Okay, so that's sort of a tour of Maximus P, what it does, and what the patches are capable of. Um, and just to show, we also have patches for six tones and 12 tones. So here's a sixth tone patch and we have all the comparisons here. Actually, I don't have a scale preset. Oh no, I do have a scale preset for this one. And it's the exact same patch. The only difference being you'll see the, the default accidental that's displayed here is always going to be these reduced fractions uh, because you'll notice if we put it on the quarter tone accidental, like last time, it just shows these zero dots because those accidentals are only for quarter tones. So this program doesn't have a standardized set of accidentals for six tones or 12 tones. So you'll need to use one of these three types, either reduced fractions, unreduced fractions, or sense values. Same... Uh, functionality and utility though we have um, the six tone interval a comparison interval and then the six tone interval again and then for these there's only one interval it's closest to since it doesn't bisect a 12 tone equal tempered interval so there's only one 12 tone equal tempered interval compared to it in the middle and then the six tone interval on either side and then the exact same pattern holds for the 12 tone equal temperament patch or sorry, the 72 tone equal temperament patch. This is a 72 tone chromatic scale, and then we have comparisons here. I only go up to 700s with the comparisons in these. If you want, you can make your own. Um, that's one thing we didn't go over yet. So if you want to make your own comparison, let's like, let's say you wanted the next comparison up from this, you could choose it from this drop down list of comparisons and then edit each interval to go up by one. And actually, I guess the comparison intervals here uh, do have to be, uh, I do list two different comparison intervals. And then you'd adjust your comparison intervals and then you would add that to the library of presets by Unlocking the patch, so you click Command E, and then you know you're in editing mode when these little tiny dots show up in the background. Double click on this object where it says prepaid, prepend stored named. Do not edit anything here. Prepend store named you need, but this name here you can edit. Uh, there are some rules. I don't think you can have underscores or like exclamation points and things. I think it's just got to be like a simple word and it can't be two words. So you can't name your idea like a piece or a melody. You would have to take the space out between them. So you have to call it like a melody right here. Okay, then once you do that, you click save to I save idea to library. It will show up in your drop down list. So you can select the thing that you made. Okay. So that's a little introduction to just how to use the patches and hopefully get you motivated as to, you know, 
seeing whether you want to use these or not, if they'll be useful to you. These are very simple. There's nothing to these. This is not that complicated in terms of a Maximus P patch. There's nothing really going on under the hood. The most complicated part of it is the sa the um, the presets that are all saved, and that's this portion of the code here. Um, so feel free to edit these patches and add to them any way you like. The Bach library is extremely useful, and that's uh, what this is designed in. Uh, again, I really encourage any musicians who are interested in any sort of electronic music at all to get familiar with Maximus P because it's very widely used and very useful. Okay, so next video is going to be how to download everything necessary to use this.